Clara Hermit and this is Breaking the Mould, our regular look at the financial markets with investment director Russ Mould. Russ, how are you? Very well, Clara. How are you? Not too bad at all. Good. Pleased Ex to see that we're coordinated. Outfit, black one. It's all yeah. very good, isn't very it? Very good indeed. Yeah. But the fuss isn't about fashion. Not on this occasion. What is the fuss about? Okay, well I think the real fuss is all going to be about real estate and mobile phones. And I think they're going to make the post-election headlines because we've got full year figures coming up from property giants, land securities and Great Portland Estates. And then on the mobile phone side, it's Vodafone. Granddaddy them all, we've got finals coming up from that company as well. Right, so let's, uh, that's a mixed bag. We've it got is, lots a bit of going a mixed on bag, there. Yep. Um, so we start off with some solid ground, bricks and mortar. Let's do it. Yeah, that's absolutely fine. But before we actually get to Great Portland and um, land securities, we've actually got figures coming up from British land on the 14th, which is the biggest of them all. Now, land is on the 19th, Great Portland on the 20th. But British land will kick off the REIT, or Real Estate Investment Trust, reporting season on that 14th date. So do go back and have a look right. at those by all means, because they will give you a bit of a feel for what's going on. Now, I'm going to begin with Great Portland, because on the 29th of April, just last month, the FTSE 250 firm announced a sale of a property, 95 Wigmore Street in West London. Now, big deal, you might think. And actually, you'd be dead right. It was an enormous deal, because the £222 million price tag was 16% above the valuation attributed to the site just last December. Wow. So UBS Asset Management snapped up the building for, at a yield of around 3.4%. And that sort of suggests that the, the appetite for commercial property, particularly in London, remains very strong as the relentless quest for income continues. So on the 20th, let's look at Great Portland's take on that particular deal and also its implications for some of the key performance metrics mm -hmm. at the company that apply to any real estate investment trust, namely, Overall property valuation, which is up 20% year on year at the Q3 stage. Rental value growth, which was up 11.2% back in December. And finally, NAV, net asset value. Now that was 608 pence a share, according to the last trading statement. Now that compares with share price of eight quid. And as you can see from the chart, Great Portland has had a lovely run, even allowing for a bit of pre-election wobbling. And the stock does now trade at a premium to historic NAV, not always a great sign for property stocks but deals like the Wigmore Street one would suggest that that's giving a bit of support to the valuation and the uplift in the share price. Now Great Portland's also expected to lift its dividend from 8.8p to around 9p a share but the yield on the stock isn't huge at just over one percent. So I assume the same themes and issues will be important for land securities growth in portfolio valuation, rental values and NAV. Yeah absolutely correct and also just look at one other statistic if you've got the time vacancy rates. Mm. Just 3.2% at Great Portland last time out, 2.7% in land securities own, own Q3 commentary. Now land's probably more of a future development story, Great Portland more a mature area, West End but obviously very highly in demand. Land offers a yield of around 3% on its shares, Great Portland again that 1%, neither figure anywhere near as high as they used to be. Land, like Great Portland's had a fantastic run, but those figures may just be enough for income investors, especially if there's a prospect of sort of uplift from property valuations mm. underlying. You mentioned income there, and I guess mm. Vodafone is another stock that investors look to in search yeah. of their dividends. Very definitely. And a consensus forecast payment for the full year to March 2015 equates to a yield in the 5% range, although given the current lack of growth in the underlying business, mm. that's possibly the sort of people figure people need to keep them interested anyway. Anyway, Vodafone's full year numbers due out on Tuesday the 19th, and boss Vittorio Colau has earning as forecast earnings before interest depreciation and amortization, EBITDA to its friends, between 11.6 and 11.9 billion pounds with positive free cash flow after capex. Now that final point is particularly important as it's the cash flow that's needed to pay for the dividends. And unless the firm makes those payments by adding more debt, then well, you don't want to see that. You want it to come out of organic cash flow. So some analysts are doubtful actually about Vodafone's cash flow given its huge 4G network spending commitment under Project Spring. Now others are bullish, believing that Spring will help Vodafone revive sales and profits growth as it facilitates more data traffic and consolidation in the industry might also help pricing as well. The chart behind us suggests optimists are just about winning the argument for now, but investors must look at the cash flow statement more than they do the P&L given the focus on consensus forecast for dividend growth to 11.5p in the year just finished and 11.75p for the year just begun. Okay, thank you, Russ. Pleasure. That was all about phones and bricks and mortar. We'll see you next time on Breaking the Mold. Goodbye.